So, section 5.4 in the Foundations of Math 30 uh, course, and it talks about mutually exclusive events, and we talk about, the, of course, the probabilities of mutually exclusive events. And if you remember uh, me mentioning this term before, that's, that's great. If you don't remember, you'll remember here uh, very quickly. So, when we talk about uh, exclusive, uh, you know what the word exclusive means, okay? It's very... Um, segregated or it's very private or very separate okay it's exclusive it's separate from other things and if uh, when we talk about mutual um, that means uh, you know one to another so between two things one to another their relationship would be that they're separate okay so mutually exclusive events now we they can be expressed in a Venn diagram with two events as completely separate from each other and if you recall, we called those disjoint sets in a, in a Venn diagram, where there was absolutely no overlap, there's no commonalities, no uh, 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 similar uh, events, okay, in either, uh, sorry, no identical outcomes in the events A or B. So in a Venn diagram, it would look something like this. You would have your, your little circle there with A, and these are, it would all be the events that would be in A, and B would be over here, and those circles would not intersect at all, okay? Mutually exclusive. It's another way to say, uh, to talk about the relationship between two sets that are totally disjoint. So this chapter we've been talking about probability, right? And if we talk about a probability of event A, we're talking about the number of favorable outcomes for event A, uh, divided by the total number of outcomes in the universal set, right? So the, if you recall, the probability of A is the number of outcomes in A divided by the number of outcomes in the universal set, right? And the same goes for B. If we're talking about the probability of B, it's the number of items in B divided by the number of items in the universal set. So the probability that A or B will happen, okay? So if you remember, or means everything in here or here. So combined all together. So what's the probability of A or B happening? And this is really easy because they're totally separate. There's no overlap. You really, it's, it's very easy. All you do is you add the probabilities. Okay? So these events... Uh, would be totally separate. So it's probability of A, whatever that is, and you add that to the probability of B. So once again, this is your most basic kind of formula, the, the basic understanding, because A and B are totally separate. Okay? So it's like, what are the chances that Josh goes to 7-Eleven today? And what are the chances that Ben goes to... Tim Hortons today, right? Um, there, there's no outcome where those those would overlap at all, right? Those are different people, different places, totally separate. Understand? So, what's the chance that either of them will happen today? Well, you take his probability, you take that probability over there, and you add them together. Okay, that's the probability that one of them uh, would happen, either one. All right, so we're not going to do a formal example from the textbook here um, for that one because we want to get to non-mutually exclusive events. So here we had mutually exclusive events. Uh, we're going to move now to non-mutually exclusive. If you didn't get all those notes, I'll come back to them later. But non-mutually exclusive events, that's what we want to talk about here now. I, again, this you've seen before, and when we talk about probability, it's really not that much different than the things that we studied in last chapter, right, when we just talked about what are the number of outcomes, probability is very, very, very similar. And so when we talk about non-mutually exclusive events, we're talking about two events that they could share outcomes, okay? There could be outcomes that are in both. That means that the intersection, right, so A and B, okay, the number of items in A and B, uh, exists, okay? So they are greater than zero, really, right? It's not an empty set. So there is some intersection. And of course, in a Venn diagram, if we drew this in a Venn diagram, well, here's 
here's event A, and then event B over here, we have to account for the fact that there may be some overlap there. So the intersection does exist. Okay, so does everyone understand that? We call these non-mutually exclusive events, that there may be some overlap. The intersection exists, okay? So, I don't know how many of you guys remember, there was a certain principle that we used last chapter to determine, um, well, to determine uh, what would be involved in all of this and all of this. So, A or B, shouldn't have said and there, but what's the probability that event A or event B will occur in this case? And do you remember what that principle was called? The principle of, uh, sorry, it, inclusion and exclusion. That's exactly right. And so what we did, if you recall, we took all the events in A, and we also took uh, all the events in B, but we realized that we double counted the intersection. And so we subtracted one number of those intersection pieces away from our equation, right? So the probability reflects this principle of inclusion and exclusion. It works just the same way. So we take the probability of event A happening, so all of those outcomes divided by the universal set, the number of the universal set, and we add to that the probability of uh, event B happening, the same way that we would do if they were mutually exclusive, but we have to realize that we have double counted the intersection, so we take away the probability that that intersection will occur. So it's really, really easy. It's, it's really the same stuff that we did in chapter four, except instead of talking about the number, like little n there, we're talking about the probability. And so you know what probability means. It's really the number of items divided by the total number of items. That's it. And so this principle holds true as well for probability. Okay, any questions up to this point? All right, hopefully that's ringing a the bell there, the mutually exclusive, right, disjoint, there's no overlap, and so you just simply add the probabilities of each one happening, and with the mutually exclusive, you add the probabilities, but then you subtract that which you might have double counted there. Okay, so we're going to move to uh, looking at an example in the textbook when we talk about probability of mutually exclusive events happening. And so if you look in your textbook on page 330, and of course we're using the Nelson Foundations of Math 12 textbook, here's the, uh, here's the example. It says determine the probability of events that are not mutually exclusive. So read along with me in your book there. Um, it, it says this, recall the board game Oh, well, I guess we didn't recall it because we haven't really looked at it. But there is a board game that uh, Yannick and Violetta are playing. According to a different rule, if a player rolls a sum that is greater than 8, okay, a sum greater than 8, or, here's the big thing here, or a multiple of 5, the player gets a bonus of 100 points in this particular game. So the question is, determine the probability that Violetta will receive a bonus so that basically this happens, sum of that's greater than 8, or she rolls a multiple of 5, what is the probability that that will happen on her next roll? And so there's two different uh, solutions I want to go over with you, and, and Violetta's solution would be this. She, she created an outcome table. And for rolling a dice here, here's the sum, and you know all about this, right? Uh, a 2 and a 5 gives you a sum of 7, and so on. And so what she did was that she highlighted the multiples of five, so that's all of these fives that are highlighted in yellow, and she also uh, highlighted the tens because that's a multiple of five, and there are no other multiple of fives that are options in this outcome table, right? So she highlighted those. Well, she also highlighted, or also highlighted in red, I guess, the sums that were greater than eight, and so we have these nines right here, and we have these tens as well. You notice they're in red as well, and we have the elevens, and we have the twelve. Okay, so from an outcome table, if you do this method, which you totally can, doing the outcome table might take you, 
you know, a little bit longer, but this is a nice visual way of doing this. And what you do is you simply count the number of uh, uh, rolls here, or sums, that you've either highlighted in yellow or in red, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Okay? So this is Violetta's solution. She just said, hey, I know there's ten of the uh, uh, of the one and seven of the other, uh, but whoops! But she realizes that hey, some of them are red and highlighted, so you know I'm just going to count those once, and so um, 14 out of 36 would be the number there. Okay, and so that would translate to about 0.388 or 39% chance. So outcome table, count one or the other. There's 14, and of course there's 36 in total. Um, the second solution, so, um, uh, let me see, oh, okay, well anyways, using the formula, so Venn diagram and the formula, and again, this is just what I want to go over here, because I want to show you that this formula for mut uh, mutually, or the principle of inclusion and exclusion, I want to show you that that works as well. So, there's, um, the number of A is 10, the number of B, okay, so one of these would be the multiples of 5, one of these would be the, the sums greater than 8. 10 and 7 if you count them separately. And there's three that are both. So those three tens fall in both categories. Right? And so if we look at the principle of inclusion and exclusion, starting right here, that we wrote down, the probability of A, um, multiples of 5, I guess, are 10 out of 36. Uh, the probability that you'd find a role that's greater than 8 would be 7. And then you subtract the ones that are both, and you get the same answer. All right? So if you if you are okay with you know the the formula here, and you can actually determine that without doing an outcome table, then there you go. That's basically all the work you would need to do and to show there, right? Um, if you like, if you're you know more visual based learner, and you want to draw this outcome table, and then just count the number. And I have that as your answer with this as your proof, as your work. That's great, too. Okay. So, any questions? No. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. All right. Well, um, there are other examples that I'll encourage you to look at. Uh, there is some, there's some notation here, too, um, that we'll go over as we move through. Um, uh, but uh, anyways, the, does anyone want to take a crack at what this statement right here would be would mean? Notice that we're adding all of these up here. So does anyone want to guess as to what that this notation right here would would mean? I think you've seen this before. Anyone know? Anybody? This is referring to, this says, the probability of A, but not B. The probability of B, but not A. Okay? And what this formula right here is talking about is looking at the Venn diagram and looking at this question in this way. If you take the probability of, and you know what, I'm just going to pause for one second and just clip this into my notes so that I can doodle on it. And I'll get to this note a little bit in a second. So if I just paste this on here, so basically that statement, which was this, the probability of A uh, or B, could also be written as the probability of A but not B, plus the probability of B but not A, plus the probability of A and B. So another way to look at that is this. Without looking at these numbers, let's just scratch out those numbers. Okay, What they're saying is that if you find the probability of this section only, this is A, but not B. That's what this is. See, it's not including the stuff that would be in B. And this right here would be the B, but not the A. So it's just this part. And this right here is, of course, the intersection. And so... That's where they would say, okay, let's add in this little piece. So they're they're basically adding in just all three pieces. You see that? 
It's a little bit of a different way to look at it. And if you if you know this data right here, if you know these numbers or this probability, then you can use this one as well. But that's just another way to look at that, okay? So obviously this would work and this approach would work as well, okay? All right, and finally my little note here. Um, the last thing that I wanted to, to, uh, to show you here, and maybe you could write this down just for your, for your own benefit here. It says when events are mutually exclusive, the probability of, oops, that should be, um, that should be uh, another A. I don't have a symbol for that. Shoot. Okay. The probability of A, let me just do this, of A and B, so the intersection there, I'll just have to, I'll just have to write that in. Sorry. So the probability of A and B is zero, right? When they're mutually exclusive, so there's no overlap, so that probability is just zero. So the principle of inclusion and exclusion can be used in either case because at the end you'll be subtracting zero, right? So you can always, um, you can always use uh, this right here. This always works, but you just have to realize that um, right? So this one right here, that always works. This will be zero sometimes if they're mutually exclusive so that you're left with just those two. Okay, um, I'll give you your assignments here for this section so you can get to work on that. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me in a moment.